As you know, the Steam Deck will support third-party applications through Flatpak. Through the KDE Discover application, you can discover third-party applications outside of Steam Deck. Kind of like, you know, an app store. But what are Flatpaks? Why are they important? What can you find on this KDE Discover app store? Are there any apps worth getting? And most importantly, are there any alternatives to Flatpaks on the Steam Deck? If you like my content, please like, subscribe, share with your friends, and join my Discord server in the description below. Flatpak is a program designed for software distribution as well as package management on Linux. Don't know what any of that means? Well, think of it as an app store. Except there's no paid apps on this app store, so it's not really a store, so to speak. It's not a totally accurate description of what a package manager is, but I don't really have a better way of explaining it to the masses, my Linux faithfuls. Anyways, why are Flatpaks so important to the Steam Deck experience? Well, because that's where you get other applications. Applications that wouldn't make sense to put on Steam, or perhaps applications you wouldn't be able to get on Steam. There are a wide variety of repos that supply Flatpaks, but I suspect the most common repo will be Flathub, unless Valve goes out of their way to make their own repo. And I believe Valve will probably take this approach. The sort of applications you'll find on Flathub are mostly productivity apps. You can also find some of the most popular applications on Flathub as well, like Firefox, Spotify, VLC, even a Minecraft launcher. There are also some games on here, though a lot of them are kind of lower quality. They're fun time wasters, but I'm not really interested in these kind of games. However, there is one notable high-profile game I see on Flathub, Olsu. Olsu is a rhythm game. It plays kind of like Elite Beat Agents if you've ever played those. You can also import music charts that are created by players, like us. In theory, you could play any genre of music, but in the Olsu community, J-pop and K-pop reign supreme. If you're not into K-pop or J-pop, then Olsu may not be for you. But the main reason people care about Flatpaks for the Steam Deck is because of emulation. And there are a ton of emulators in Flatpak. You have RetroArch. The RetroArch is on Steam itself, so you don't need to worry about the Flatpak here. You have Yuzu, a Nintendo Switch emulator. In fact, in a prior video, I showcased the Flatpak version of Yuzu. There's also Citra, a 3DS emulator. Flycast, a Dreamcast emulator. BNES, a high accuracy Super Nintendo emulator and many more. Flatpaks are the closest thing to being a it just works thing for Linux. However, there must be some caveats, right? Well, kind of. The most obvious con I can think of for Flatpaks are that Flatpak sizes can be big. Rather than using system libraries or redistributables, they instead package their own. This can also be a good thing, especially if you're dealing with people that are using different distros. Not all Linux installations will have all of the dependencies that they need to get things up and running. The Flatpak approach basically guarantees that apps will just work, provided the app itself isn't faulty. Of course, you're not limited to just Flatpaks. There are other ways to get applications as well. In SteamOS, there is a dev mode slider that you can turn on and off. You can toggle it on and off. I got this from an anonymous source, by the way. Once you enable dev mode, you have free reign over your system. You can run the terminal and you can run the pack manager, aka Pacman. You can also get stuff from the Arch user repository as well. There are also things called app images. Downloading an app image is as simple as going to a developer's website and, you know, downloading it. It's kind of like downloading an EXE file on Windows. Unlike some of these other solutions, there's no robust auto-update system, so you're responsible for updating this on your own.